Hi, everybody. Thank you again for joining us. Joining us today is Christoph Hemmen, the Regional Head of Air Freight for DB Schenker. Christoph, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you a quick question about MIA Airport. Can you touch on the cargo business through the airport and then also how that impacts Schenker's 12 to 18 month plan? Oh, absolutely. So Miami has always been a key, you know, kind of airport for us from an infrastructure for the North and South America traffic, but as well for incoming traffic from Europe and Asia Pacific. All right, so it's one of our major gateways in our U.S. infrastructure. It plays a very important role for our future and our planning. We're expanding our facility here right now from a cool facility perspective to meet the future healthcare pharmaceutical demand and, and connecting right, the supply chains and, and the goods moving through Miami. So it's a very critical infrastructure and airport for us in our portfolio today. Can you touch on the issues that the industry is facing today and how that impacts DB Schenker? Absolutely. What we see, you know, as a major impact in the last two and a half years has been the labor challenge. And not just related to the U.S., but in general, the entire industry, people being on sick leave, right, and, and being able to process freight. Um, the, the second one is infrastructure that comes along. You know, kind of in, in many parts of the world, the existing infrastructure is 30, 40 years ago. We need to modernize how we run the business, you know, how we process the business. So it's not just a need for building new modern facilities to be better in what we do and to be faster and more efficient. It's also the way on how we process freight and the way of digitalization, right? Uh, and bring everyone together from a shipper, customer perspective to the airline, to the airport, the forwarder, so that we can make it happen as a group, right? And, and act more efficient in supply chains in the future. Latam Cargo plans to double its capacity between Europe and the Americas. Can you touch on what that means for us and also MIA? Overall, right? very good development, right? We need that capacity in the market right now. You know, we've seen that demand. Uh, a lot of airlines actually reduced their freighter capacity over the last 10, 15 years. Now seeing LATAM making that decision to bring more capacity into the market is, is great for us, right? It will enable us to to utilize it more, right? And, and, and be faster, have more space available, you know, and, and continue that globalization that we've seen in the world. Um, on the other side, it's a very interesting approach because in a situation where right now the demand is very high, we've seen some of the airlines taking these steps. So, you know, it, it helps us to build on the existing capacity. On the other side, the question is, what does it mean in the future? You know, is that capacity maybe too much? You know, are 13 flights a week too much what they're bringing into the, you know, into the new schedule? But overall, we appreciate that. We see it as a very good step. We're cautiously monitoring the market to see how it will develop. For Miami, I think it's a great step forward, you know, continuing that expansion and um, becoming even more of that gateway to Latin America, connecting the U.S., the Europe and mm -hmm. Asia Pacific. In addition you know, to other markets that we have in the U.S. with flights from Chicago and New York, but Miami is and will always remain that major gateway and where Latin is always a key player for us. Can you touch on the forecast that you foresee? We overall have been in a very strong air cargo market for the last two and a half years, right? Which is partially caused by the restricted capacity and limited capacity. We, we've seen that, you know, we've had months on months growth rates almost for the last, you know, one and a half years from initially when there was a strong decline uh, with the pandemic and then air cargo was picking up very quickly. On the other side, we've seen that, especially in the last three months since the China lockdown, the, the world has been struggling a bit to pick up on it again. So we're cautiously watching the market to see what will happen. Certain trade lanes still remain very strong, but we've seen other trade lanes weakening. So I think it really depends on where's the economy going to go, right? Do we possibly go into a recession and, you know, will it impact air cargo immediately? Yes, for sure it will. Right? It's always been one of the first markets that reacts on the, on the economy. But we still do see a major growth potential in certain markets and the growth out and into Latin America has been strong. The U.S. remains a strong market right now, so we're positive here. So shippers have mentioned some issues with um, re reliability and flexibility. Can you touch on that and also what Shanker does to combat that, those issues? Absolutely. So if we split it right in regards to flexibility in air freight, it's always more challenging because your transit time is very short. So if you want to be flexible and you want to reroute the shipment, right, you have to be very quick. But at the same time, you have to make sure that you look at the customs you know, regulations. If you can actually even reroute it, if it's already on the way, you know, kind of if the carrier has already booked it in for a second leg, it's not something which is easily done. So the rerouting is really something which is quite demanding and challenging. So once a shipment has left and departed, it's typically on its way and then you know, it, it becomes almost impossible to reroute it. 
On the other side, from the reliability, that is something that we've seen for you know the last two, three, four years, that where there's a very high demand for real-time track and trace, knowing when my shipments arrive. And I think customers have seen the frustration of the COVID impact, being shipments being laid, delays in you know the capacity because of limited capacity available. So what they were used to from the last 15, 20 years is what they don't experience now. Mm -hmm. We felt it, we've seen that, you know, we work with the airlines all the time. Something that really helps us is the GPS tracking. But at the same time we always have to make sure it complies with the you know with the regulations, IATA regulations, so that the devices turn off when the aircraft you know accelerate. It's something that will drive our future. We need more real-time track and trace to build more transparency. And that's definitely one of our priorities that we look into. We have devices and, and you know, companies we work with, especially also during the vaccine distribution. This was a major and you know, critical part of, uh, of ensuring to have transparency where the vaccines and the goods are. So we will continue that path and that digitalization of information and creating more transparency along the supply chain. So Schenker is a leader in sustainability efforts. Do you mind touching on what you foresee for 2050? Do you think we're going to reach this goal and our sustainability efforts as well as it pertains to air freight? I think overall, you know, we've seen a lot of development in that area throughout the last two to five years. Initially, five years, you know, it was kicked off to everyone got it more into focus. We see the next generation looks at it as a critical element if they purchase from companies or not and what, you know, companies are doing in that area. Right? Sustainability is a core element of a company's philosophy today. Um, what we've done is that we've set up the sustainable aviation fuel flight uh, between Europe and China, which has been a great success for us as DB Schenker. We're also working with other airlines and to broaden that network. And sustainable aviation fuel is probably the key enabler for us right now because we can utilize it. It's there, right? It's real. It's not like considering a hydrogen aircraft that will fly in 10, 15 years. So we have to make use of what is possible and what we can implement now to already reduce emissions. 2050 will be a challenge. You know, there's a lot of aspects to consider. Sustainable aviation fuel is produced out of, you know, kind of an example, you know, a waste process to collect oil. So it's something that is limited as well to how much can be produced. And on the other side, we don't want to, you know, kind of sacrifice agricultural land to produce more palm oil, to produce more sustainable aviation fuel. That's not what we consider sustainability. Mm -hmm. So we will have to balance all of this into one, you know, look at newer aircraft, newer engines, you know, we'll partner with airlines that, uh, that work in that area, use sustainable aviation fuel to a larger degree, and bring all this together to reduce the overall emissions. I still consider 2050 tough, but we have to do it if you consider, you know, what's happening right now in the global warming. Thank you so much for joining us, Christoph. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if there's any questions, you know, feel free to reach out uh, to us. Go to our global website, you know, and we're happy to help you with your needs. Perfect. And thank you all for tuning in.